What's going on everybody? Marco here with 4 for 4 and I am bringing you my week three, five moves to make. I'm kicking it off with tight ends. Now I know we don't talk about tight ends a ton, but whether you're tight end premium or not, redraft or dynasty, you need to be buying Sam Laporta. Now granted in dynasty leagues and tight end premium leagues, this will be more difficult. But if we're talking redraft, we're talking one tight end or sorry, uh, non tight end premium, you want to get Sam Laporta. He may be on your waivers depending how deep your league is, but he is a tight end one. He is going to be a tight end one for the remainder of the season. His schedule coming up is great for the tight end position. And he is functioning as the Lions' primary pass catching tight end and tight end overall. He's averaged just over five targets, five and a half targets a game over the last two games. He's getting the volume. The touchdowns will come. Like I've talked about in other videos, the Detroit Lions tight ends accounted for 12 touchdowns last season. And it's likely that at least you know, half of those, if not more, will go to Sam Laporta in 2023. Jared Goff already trusts him as a reliable, safe option in the middle of the field. And I think Sam Laporta for the next three weeks, especially could be a top five tight end with upside. Bye, 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 Sam Laporta. Whether you need to add him or make a trade, do it. The next move that you need to make is buy Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, of course, after the first two weeks, he is unlikely to be garnering a huge return. He has largely not been a fantasy asset. You know, in week one, he tied for the team lead in targets and had five of those, but he really didn't turn that into fantasy production. And in week two, he had even less fantasy production, but he ran 28 out of, I believe, like 47 or 48 routes, if I'm uh, getting that right off the top of my head. The reality is he's not, he's not recovered. He is not fully recovered from the wrist surgery. We knew that the second the wrist surgery happened, it was going to be a little bit of a slow burn for Jackson Smith and Jigba to establish himself, especially in a competitive wide receiver room. I think that he could be a post bye week breakout. So if you can get him now for cheap, you will not have to pay a premium when he does start getting on the field more and more. Buy Jackson Smith and Jigba now while you still can. My next move to make is all about the Houston Texans. We have a superstar in the Houston Texans quarterback, CJ Stroud. Now I'm not gonna be talking about CJ Stroud because if you're in one QB leagues, as good as he's been, he's likely not a quarterback you need to really prioritize in one QB leagues, especially in his rookie season. He's figuring it out, but he's got a defense that lets up a lot of points, which means he will be throwing a lot and his two wide receivers who broke out last week. We've been waiting for the Nico Collins breakout, but uh, last week it really he really emerged as well as Nathaniel Tank Dell. Both of these guys saw insane target volume and that's likely to continue for the Texans and for uh, these two wide receivers with quarterback CJ Stroud. If I had to prioritize one, I'm taking Nico Collins. He is the X wide receiver. He is the number one wide receiver for this team. He's gonna likely continue to lead this team in targets and he's got that big body frame that makes him a threat in the red zone for whenever they get there, which might not be often, but they're likely to get there a couple more times at least this season. And I think Nico Collins is the primary benefactor of that. And of course, in PPR leagues, that volume matters, not just for Nico, but for Tank Dell. I think he's going to really establish himself as the wide receiver two for this team continuously uh, throughout this season. Robert Woods is still there, but overall, I think these are the two wide receivers you want, and they could be wide receiver league winners. With Tank Dell, 15 to 20% of the fab seems more than reasonable. If Nico Collins is up out there, I would give up to 25% because again, this team's going to be throwing a lot. These are the two primary benefactors. I hope you didn't buy in on Damian Pierce like I told you not to. The next move I am making is Roshan Johnson. Now, of course, a lot of people spent their fab. They picked Roshan Johnson up last week. I was telling you guys for the last couple of weeks, Roshan Johnson's gonna be the guy. He's gonna be the guy. He's gonna be the guy. Give him some time. With Dante Foreman being inactive, Roshan got more opportunity in this one, but so did Khalil Herbert. And on the ground, so did Justin Fields. This was always going to be a tough matchup. And this offense is, I mean, it's bad. It's really bad. The offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, cannot figure out how to drop a professional NFL offense. And Justin Fields is not helping himself, but he's also seemingly apathetic when you look at him play. He does not have that fire. And this offense has just stalled out after stall out after stall out. 
That being said, next week we could see, we could see Roshan Johnson really step into a really nice role against the Kansas City Chiefs. He's going to be used on passing downs, of course. Obviously, as a pass blocker, he's one of the pe- better pass blockers on their team uh, who isn't an offensive lineman. And so I think he'll be involved in that. Khalil Herbert showed last week or in week two that even with a bad offensive line, even with you know limited scoring opportunity, he is good. Like we we know we've known that about Khalil Herbert. He's a good player. He's a really good committee running back. And I think this one-two punch is going to be what we see more of rather than a Roshan just dominating. But what I've talked about all offseason was that what I do see Roshan dominating is the high leverage opportunity. I think against an easier defense to do it against and an off or in a game that they're gonna have to be throwing the ball a ton against the Kansas City Chiefs, week three we could see. Roshan take another step forward and by week six, seven, eight, he is dominating those high leverage touches, the goal line opportunity, the passing downs. That's what you want in fantasy football, especially for a guy that you picked up off waivers or he was your last pick in your fantasy drafts. Buy in on Roshan Johnson. If someone's going to drop him after this week, I wouldn't be surprised. Go pick him up. Final move to make is that you need to find the Quentin Johnston believer in your league and trade Quentin Johnston away because it's not going to feel good to drop this guy. But here's the truth with Johnston. The Chargers don't trust him. He might not ever be a thing in the NFL. And I know we're only two weeks into the season. How can you say that? He was a first round draft pick. I understand. He's currently behind Josh Palmer. So he is the wide receiver four. So one injury helps. Two injuries makes him actually fantasy relevant. And if we look at what the targets broke down to, or the routes run broke broke down to in week two, Josh Palmer had 28, Quentin Johnston had nine. He was actually actually ran less routes than the tight uh, the Chargers tight end one, tight end two, and tight end three. He is the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh option on this team. If there is someone who is buying in on the upside of Quentin Johnson and the hopes that there's an injury ahead of him that he can get onto the field, sell, sell, sell. I would trade Quentin Johnson for Roshan Johnson. Straight up, I would do that because otherwise you're going to drop this guy. He's a roster clogger. He's not doing anything for you right now. He's not likely to at the very least in 2023. And we just know what the history tells us when a rookie flops this hard, especially a first round rookie. It's not likely to be dynasty value. So if you're looking at watching this as a dynasty manager, it's kind of the same. Move on from Quentin Johnston. That is my five moves to make for week three. If you have questions, drop them below. Follow me on Twitter at Marco underscore NFL, and I can answer any tweets, DMs, whatever it might be. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. We have tons of content, whether it be the Johns, whether it be Tara, whether it be myself, we have tons and tons of content coming out. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that like button below to help me out and be kind, do good. We'll see you next week and good luck in week three. Peace.